Hi everyone, this is Michelle Gralick and I am here with my colleague Robert McTighe. And we want to talk to you today about how you can use Student Tracker to assist with your iPad's outcome measures reporting. So we're going to take, I don't know, it's maybe, I'll say 15 minutes at the most, and review a few steps. Some you may already know, but some you might need a little refresher, and just go through the process to help you understand how to use Student Tracker. So a couple things we're going to talk about is the I iPads outcome measure and how Student Tracker can assist with finding those outcome measures. So there's a three-step process. You're going to identify the students, create the request file to upload, and then review the aggregate report to find results. All right, so this is a screenshot of something from iPad. So you can see this is for the 1718 data collection period and their um, second column from the right lets you know that this is the outcome measure that opens up December 13th and it looks like you have until mid-February to get the results in. So that's just a, I guess you could say a timeline. Down at the bottom, shouldn't be a surprise to you, this is the URL where you go to get the actual iPads outcome measure report for which you would input your data. And the iPads outcome measure covers the 2009-10 academic year. So this, this page just shows you what the first page of that iPads outcome measure survey looks like. Again, the 2017-18 collection, letting you know that now there are um, four cohorts of, of for which you have to report the first time, full time entering, etc. So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the next few slides. So once you're in the actual survey, you can scroll down to page five. And this is where we think Student Tracker will be able to help you with um, one of those columns. Most of the columns that you report are for students at your own institution. You should be able to get that data. But the one there about a little bit to the right of the middle, for students who did not get an award from your institution, the question is number who enrolled at another institution after leaving you yours. This is the column for which you can use Student Tracker and if you were looking at the survey yourself you'd see there's a couple of categories down the left side for which you have to report the numbers and we'll talk about that on our next slide. So a little background about the Clearinghouse. We've been around for 25 years now. We have 3,600 colleges and universities that do participate with us. This gives us 98 percent of all post-secondary enrollments and 93% of all degrees awarded in the U.S. So the first thing you're going to want to do is identify the students. So compile a file with the students who started at your institution in the 2009-2010 but did not receive an award. Gather the following information for these students. The name, date of birth, and then the student's last date of attendance at your institution. Identify the following enrollment characteristics for each student. First time entering versus non-first time entering, full time versus part time, and Pell Grant recipients versus non-Pell Grant recipients. You will need these numbers in your iPad survey. So in creating your request file, follow the instructions in the Student Tracker user guide to prepare this file. The link for this will be provided at the end of this PowerPoint. You're going to use the search type in your header row as SE for subsequent enrollment, and a search date is going to be the student's last date of attendance at your institution. Student Tracker will then look for these students in the Clearinghouse's database, and if found and they don't have a FERPA block, we will return enrollment records with a term end date after the search date, and credential and degree records with an award date after the search date. So when you're creating your request file, you may want to create four separate request files. These will each coincide with how iPad survey is structured. An example would be one file could have students who were first-time, full-time Pell Grant recipients. Another could be the first-time, full-time non-Pell Grant recipients, and so on and so forth in the example provided. Just a reminder that the request file must have at least 11 students in the file. So as Rob said, after you submit your request file, 
it goes through our matching process. The clearinghouse returns reports to you all through to your FTP. And if you've been using Student Tracker for a little while, you know we return three reports, the detail report, a control report, and an aggregate report. So the aggregate report is going to give you a list of schools that the students first attended, but it's an aggregate number of the students that we were able to find in the database. Because it's aggregate, it will include a count for students who may have been blocked. So you're getting a more comprehensive number than if you just use the detail report. And again, this the only counts the students one time, and it shows you the total number that you could report in the iPads. And just a quick example, this should look familiar to you. It's just our uh, hometown university sample of an aggregate report where you can see that this particular file had 14 students and the different schools that the student first attended. So you will know then that here, 14 students went to a school after they left your institution. If by chance your institution is the very first school, you may want to adjust your search date because theoretically for this iPads report, you don't want students who are at your institution. So we showed you how to use the aggregate report to get your total number for each category. If you are a more experienced user with Student Tracker, you may want to put all of your students in one file and make use of that request or return field. So you could then have a, a code for a first time student F and non full non first time and F something like that and then when you get your detail report you're able to sort or, or find students that meet that characteristic and get your totals it's just a tad um, probably not going to be as comprehensive because again the detail report will not return any records when the student has a block so you're not getting the true aggregate count but if you don't have a lot of blocks at your institution, it might be a great way to save some time. So everyone, thank you for listening, for taking a few minutes to watch this. Hopefully it was helpful to help you understand Student Tracker and how it can assist you with that particular field of the iPads outcome measure. If you have any questions, we'll show you the next slide and that shows you a breakout of the states in the country and the particular uh, client relationship manager assigned to your state. And then here below we have the link for the student tracker user manual. It's very easy to find if you just go to studentclearinghouse.org, hover over that green tab that's on there for colleges and universities. And then you'll see a sub tab for student tracker. Just click on that. And there's a lot of information, some good resources out on that page. But on the right side, there are resources. And if you scroll towards the bottom, you'll see the link for the user manual. So here is the map of the country. You can look for the state that your institution is in and you will see the person's name who is your client relationship manager. Most likely you already know who this person is, but you have the phone number there. So I'll just hold on this slide for just a few minutes here, a few seconds, so you can find your state and get the number. And then again, hopefully this was all very helpful to you. Again, if you have questions, please reach out. Hopefully, Student Tracker is going to give you um, some good data that you can use for doing your iPads outcome measure survey. Thank you all for listening.